Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ibrahim uh, Mossad, I'm a security engineer at Meta. First, uh, apologies for uh, the delay, the, the technical delay, uh, but yeah, I think uh, we're, we're good to start. I, I hope everyone can hear me, can see me well, um, and I'll, I'll start. <laughs> I, I cannot see you, so I'm not sure if it's working or not, but let's hope it is. Uh, Alright, so my name is Ibrahim, I'm a security engineer at Meta, and uh, today I will be speaking about static analysis. Do you speak my language? Make static analysis engines understand and work together with, with each other. Um, if you don't know much about static analysis, that's fine. I will walk you through uh, what does it mean and I will uh, explain the, uh, the, the relevant bits throughout the presentation. Uh, when I made this presentation for the first time, it was like too technical, but I, I know this is a managerial session, so I'll try to keep the uh, presentation as, as high level as possible, but keeping the interesting bits uh, in here. If I end up going a little bit technical, so apologies for that in advance, but I will always try to go, um, uh, I'll always try to kind of uh, go up high, high level. Uh, if, if you are interested in the, in the, in the technical bits though, uh, you can always go into, uh, so I presented this in Black Hat last year, uh, a more extended version of this slide, so you can go back to these slides for the technical, uh, the super technical dip, uh, bits. All right, let's get started. Uh, so to give you a peek of this, what, what this presentation will be about, uh, let's start with this code snippet here. Uh, so let's imagine this is the Facebook Facebook endpoints to return page information. Um, so you take a page name and return the posts, the everything related to a page. And as most of you in the uh, can can see, there is a SQL injection vulnerability here. You have a username a page name coming from the user, and then after that we do a SQL query in an unsafe way that leads to SQL injection. Uh, the SQL injection here is straightforward. Everything happens in uh, one piece of code and you can find these bugs using grep and, and other uh, uh, pattern matching uh, 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 software. This is not what this presentation is about. Uh, this is another example where we have the same SQL injection, but real code usually have higher abstractions, have different frameworks. And here we have the rav get page name, a function that return you the user name, uh, the, the page name eventually, uh, but from user controlled data, and then wrap fetch data is like a couple of functions that uh, wrap the SQL query. But the SQL injection is still here, but in order to find the SQL injection through automation, you need more advanced tools or more advanced themed uh, static analysis tools. Uh, we, we have open sourced a couple of tools that help us to take this type of patterns, and in this presentation, I'll walk you briefly about how do they work. But what this presentation is about is this code snippet here. So on a higher level, this is the same SQL injection exists here without going into the code. But the interesting bits here is that uh, the, the SQL injection is, be is spanned between two code bases. On the left hand side, you can see PHP code or, or hack code. This is what we use inside Meta. And on the right hand side, you can see Python code. The same SQL injection exists, but this time across two code bases. And this is what this presentation is about. With that, uh, let's quickly introduce myself. You know my name, my name is Ibrahim Mossad. I am a security engineer at Meta for the past uh, six years. Uh, I work on automation and static analysis. And what I focus on is how can I make sure that static analysis uh, software security engineers can scale, how we can scale our own uh, detection and we find all kind of vulnerabilities in an, autom in an automated fashion. Before uh, Meta, I used to work uh, at EGCERT, QCERT, Deloitte as a security consultant, penetration tester. Uh, also, I presented at different conferences, uh, DEF CON, Black Hat, uh, I think this is the third time I, pre uh, I presented uh, the ARP security conference. This is my Twitter handle if you have any questions or anything related to this presentation, and also uh, feel free to add any questions to uh, the Hoover application. All right, let's get with the agenda. So, uh, we'll start with motivation. Why do we care about uh, cross-language team flow analysis, or why do we need to make sure that static analysis engine need to take to talk to each other, why this is valuable. Uh, and then we'll recap the single repo analysis or how we find that SQL injection in the same code base, no matter how complex is this. And then we'll talk about the cross repo team flow analysis, which is the core of this slide. And if we have time, I hope we will, uh, I'll show you an example flow of the uh, vulnerability uh, of a vulnerability that we have actually detected with this effort. And we'll end up with conclusions and answering some, some questions. All right, uh, so let's start. So. When we think of a web application or applications generally, we would think of this design here. So we have user uh, sending requests through some sort of proxy, uh, and we have the application logic. So this is if this is Facebook.com, so the application logic will be mostly written in PHP, and uh, we have some database that stores the data, and then the application logic processes the request, 
return the data to the user and that's it it should work um, this is the or the logical way of seeing this architecture is i was technically true for i don't know like maybe 20 years ago or something but most of applications now look actually something like this so you have a smaller piece of the application logic and you have a lot of services that this application logic connect with so a page service a messaging service an authentication service and there are a lot of reasons of why software engineers develop and go into this microservice oriented architecture different reasons so scalability maintenance uh, there's a lot of reasons why they do that so let's see an actual couple of real examples here twitter uh, i think around 2000 used to look something like this monorail one big piece of code and uh, query mysql uh, but in 2010 or something like this twitter looked something like this a lot of microservices a lot of connections between everything and I'm sure security vulnerabilities still exist, but this time, rather than in the one single monolithic code base, it exists across uh, services. Netflix is the same. So you have a single piece of code, monolithic code base, monolithic database, everything tightly coupled architecture, and they evolved to something like this. So very chaotic or maybe organized chaos is, but you have a smaller application the application uh, use service client architecture and microservice architecture and they send requests. So the vulnerabilities exist and as security engineers or as a person of trying to protect your company or your uh, organization, the, the vulnerabilities now across different code bases or across different services and this makes security reviews very hard to, to, to review and also they you expect your security engineers to be superheroes to review code from PHP, review code from Python, review code I don't know, C plus plus, Java, and a lot of services. And automation is a key point here to to make sure that your team can scale and your team can um, succeed. All right, now we understand the problem, uh, and Facebook is no different than this style. This is mostly how our architecture is kind of organized. So how static analysis help? So let's talk about static analysis at Facebook and. Uh, let me take you back to this slide, this piece of code here. Remember, uh, this we know that there is a SQL injection here, but we want to know how single or tame flow static analysis will detect this vulnerability. So this is single repo, nothing, no magic here. Uh, and I'll walk you through how it works. And this is, by the way, how most of the uh, static analysis tools in the world work. They focus on a single code base, they focus on um, um, a single repo and a single language, and, and they work from there. So what the static analysis tool will do, like let's put the static analysis hat on, and what the tool will do is like, all right, uh, the view page, this function calls two functions, wrap get page name and wrap fetch data. Uh, let's go into wrap get page name. Uh, this function has uh, three calls, so it calls first get page name and then calls get page, uh, sorry, wrap get page name and then uh, get page name and eventually calls request. The main idea that I want you to get from here is that wrap get page name returns user control data or as I, I like to call it, untrusted data. So request is anything comes from the user. In this case, it's the page name, but this can be any string and the user control this. The static analysis tool will keep that information and go into wrap fetch data and uh, do the same. And it will realize that wrap fetch data goes into uh, another function and eventually does a SQL query or unsafe SQL query. So the static analysis tool will say, all right, wrap fetch data can lead to a SQL injection and wrap get page name, use on get untrusted data, if I connect both together, we have a SQL injection. This is what most of the static analysis tools work and do. In order to visualize everything in one page, let's look at this slide. Uh, to just understand this slide, so we have a tree. The root of the tree is where the untrusted data and the dangerous function meet together. On the bottom left, you see the request, untrusted data, a couple of functions, which are our wrapper functions that we went through, and then we go forward this data to the dangerous function. This is how you can visualize everything as a trace, uh, and, and this is what the static analysis uh, see. At Meta, we have three tools that does this. Zone Clan is a Tainflow and static analysis tool that work for Hack or PHP. PISA, it's an open source static analysis tool that work for Python. Mariana Trench is a static analysis tool that work for Android. It's also open source. These three tools work the same way I have just explained. All right, on a higher level architecture, how do they actually work or how everything fits together? So this is the design uh, diagram for it. Uh, let, let's break it down a little bit. So on the top left, you see the language. So it could be PHP, Python, or Java. And then you have security engineers, which is me, 
and we create sources and sinks. So this is one piece of what we do. So or the configuration. What is untrusted? What are the unsafe functions? The MySQL uh, query? Are there like other functions that can lead to security vulnerabilities? And depending on the language, the right tool works and then find the vulnerabilities, store it into a database, and then security engineers go view the UI. This is how everything works internally at Meta. And with that, we were able to detect around 50% of the security bugs at Meta. 50% of the vulnerabilities that we detect, also the ones include uh, very high severity, are detected through automation, which is great. I think around seven years ago, we didn't have this number and we were not even close. And a couple of things to mention here. What we compete with is bug bounty. So we have one of the best bug bounty programs in the world. We also compete with manual security reviews. So we have some of the best security engineers in the world. And with tooling, we were able to detect 50% of these vulnerabilities. And this gives us the value of automation. How can you scale your team in an organization that has more than 100,000 software engineers that write code every single day? All right, now let's go into cross reboot info analysis. How we detect this SQL injection here? Remember, the SQL injection, two code bases, not directly connected to each other, how can we de detect it with tooling? So in order to find this with static analysis, there is like, on a high level, there are three points. One, so if we have a PHP static analysis tool, yes, we have some plan that can review the code and identify call to these services or to the microservices that we will send a request to and they will return the data. All right, we can probably teach Zonclan to do that. And then if we have a Python static analysis tool that can uh, review the Python code and identify service implementation. So it knows that this function is an implementation for a specific service. All right, we have PISA, which is open source and can does this and we can teach PISA a little bit about the services. And somehow we need both to talk together or to communicate together so they can together work, they can find this, the SQL injection vulnerability. And let's see that in action. So this is back to the piece of code that uh, we were looking at at the beginning, but that had the SQL injection. In the previous example, everything was in one page. The main difference here is that there are four or five lines of code and then there's client fetch data. So the call goes to, we do a, a service call to uh, a service called page service async client. And we call the service and we call it fetch. Give me the page information. Give me all information related to the page because I want to show this uh, to the user. Uh, so if Zonkalan is analyzing this, what Zonkalan will do, we want Zonkalan to do two things. One is that, all right, we know wrap get pitch data returns untrusted data from the user. We know this already. And what we will want to teach Zonkalan or what we've done is that, say, the client fetch data, mark this as a call to a service. The name of the service is page service, and we're calling the function fetch data. Wrap this together and store it into a database. Keep that information now because PISA are going to read it. Now, let's go into the Python. So the static analysis tool in the Python will analyze this code, a lot of code. Let's focus only on the things that matter here. So fetch data. When PISA tries to analyze this code, it will know, all right, I know this is a service implementation. Let me look at the data or at the database to see if the PHP static analysis tool had stored anything there. It will take that information and then say, okay, now I want to analyze this function. When PISA analyzes this function, it says, I know that the call to cursor execute query, this is unsafe. I know there can be a SQL injection here. But I also know from Zonkalan that close can be user controlled because Zonkalan told me that there is a call to fetch data or the PHP tool told me that there is a call to fetch data from untrusted data. And because I have this information and I can read the, the Python code, then there is a SQL injection here and I will add that, that SQL injection. And this is how the two tools will work together to find that SQL injection. I know this is a little bit on, a, on the higher level, but that is intended. And if you want to go deeper, again, feel free to look back at my extended version here. To visualize everything in one page, let's look at the trace. It can be complex. Let's break it apart. Left-hand side, exactly the one that you saw before. So everything in PHP. Now the right-hand side is the actual Python part. And the root here is the service. So we go through the page service, fetch data, and then we end up with the uh, SQL injection vulnerability here. Again, let's go a little bit high level, a high level. So this is what the design looked like before how the two tools can communicate to each other. There is no communication between the tools here, but this is what the design looked like after the communication. Too complex, let's break it apart. So the first part, when Zonkolan run or the PHP tool runs, it analyzes the code normally, everything, 
but it stores extra piece of information, which you see the line here, the cross repo model extraction. So it stores the service call information into a database that we call CRTEC, cross repo taint exchange. Uh, so we store that here, don't plan finish the run. Now PISA or the Python tool will run. So the Python tool will read from the this library, the database, the CRTEC database, and with the normal sources and or the configuration, take both together and then analyze the code, find the SQL injection. This is how everything works now for the cross language uh, taint flow analysis that we have at Meta. All right, how this is deployed, how this is actually used in action. So remember we have Zonclan or the PHP tool, it runs, it needs to run first and we call these producers. So the tool that runs first and produces what are the calls to the services or the microservices that we have. And then we have in our case, the Python is consuming the result and we call this consumers. So at Meta, we have producers, Zonclan runs at facebook.com. So we analyze facebook.com, all the code behind facebook.com, and we store that as uh, in the producer run. Same with Instagram. And for uh, our tool, the Java tool, it runs on the Android mobile applications. And then the same tools actually we use them also for backend services. So for our services, Zonecon runs again for any service that has a PHP implementation. Uh, the Python tool runs for any service that have a Python implementation, and the Java tool runs for any service that have a Java implementation. And you can have anything. You can have uh, Facebook.com calling a service that runs on Python. Facebook.com calls a service that runs uh, on Java, and it 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 should work. All right. Uh, the other thing, okay, when these runs, or like when, when does this happen or how regularly these, uh, these tools run? So we have what we call a master run. So these are periodic runs that per day and we find issues, but this is for everything that lands on the code or new features that lands or any kind of anything that we, new, we do new on the code. But we want to do better than this. And this is the other mode of run that we have or the other mode of deployment. We have what we call with pull requests or when any software engineer writes a new piece of code, they put up a pull request, we analyze this code before and after. And this gives us the ability to find vulnerabilities as early as possible once they put up the code, even if they were cross language uh, or, or no matter how complex uh, they, they are. All right, now, uh, and I hope I have, I think I still have more, uh, four minutes, let's go into an example um, finding. So uh, the example finding here is uh, th this is a real vulnerability that we found last year, and it's cross-language, and I'll show you the value of, of the cross-language here. So this vulnerability was found on, um, on Workplace. Workplace, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not, but you can think of it something very similar to Facebook for companies. So it's a communication platform that connects everyone in your company. Uh, so you can, it's a mix between Facebook and Slack. We have a, something that's very similar to Messenger called WorkChat. Uh, and workplace where you have uh, groups and, and, and you have posts, everything very similar to uh, Facebook. And the vulnerability was someone can send a request to workplace, which is written in PHP, and workplace will call a service that called VC room service, and the vulnerability was in that VC room service, but you can exploit it through workplace.com. And uh, the VC room service is written in Python, very similar to the example I mentioned earlier, and the uh, the, the, the VC room is, is or a feature that when you do uh, video calls or video conferences. Uh, all right, let's look at the actual trace. It's complex. I know it is complex, but we're not going to dive into everything here in details. But the main things to highlight is on the left hand side, you have your PHP code on the right side hand side, you, you have the Python code. Also a couple of things. This is was a remote command execution vulnerability, which is a very severe vulnerability. It's on a the, the trace is complex by default, and this is what security engineers will normally have to go through to find this vulnerability. So you want the kind of a superhero security engineer who reviews PHP code, who reviews Python code, understand these services can connect to each other, but now with the tool, we actually find this automatically. The, the next slides are a little bit, we're actually going through the code, but I'll skim through them super quickly, but I just wanna show you the real thing and how we actually find it. Uh, this is, by the way, our UI. This is how the UI works, but this is one frame here. So we start from this call, uh, which the first, like the bottom left of, of this graph, so we start with what we call GraphQL. GraphQL, you can think of it as a REST API. Uh, so anyone can call this uh, REST API or uh, get, get information. And the, the, the REST API here, the call workrooms start VC bridge. Uh, the couple of the main points here is that 
uh, anything here is user controlled or like data is user controlled and then after that data goes to a function called genspawn this is the php part uh, we will could uh, yeah the one thing to mention here this was gate uh, behind a gatekeeper or behind a switch so this was only enabled for employees for testing or before the feature launched and this is when we detected the vulnerability so no one was actually affected uh, by by this or no real users have been affected by this but the vulnerability was there and it was exploitable uh, but only for limited uh, employees uh, and then we continue for the php code so we know route is user control your untrusted data and it goes into client start so client start which is the service call that we're calling to the python um, uh, service and then here uh, the Python setting also picks up the flow and continue normally to go inside uh, the uh, start async function. And here you see the command is actually getting populated. So args, we create a, a command because uh, we want to execute that. And then we ex call exit command and then we call the uh, VM exec function, which eventually actually SSH into a machine and execute a command uh, there. So yes, this is a remote command execution vulnerability at meta at 2021, which is super difficult if you do white hat program or even if you have your normal uh, company probably there is not a lot of reports for command execution vulnerabilities because their software engineers are aware of them frameworks are good now but because of the complexity that we have in the systems now they still exist but they just kind of hidden in, in plain sight or they're too complex to actually find them now and we managed to find that through automation all right so takeaways if you are an application security team Use static analysis, it scales, it helps your team scale, and probably your team is a small team, and if your company is a medium to large size company, it's worth the investment. If you're a small company, maybe security reviews is enough, but as long as you're a large company, static analysis is worth the investment here. Our uh, Python static analysis tool and our Android uh, and Java static analysis tool are open source, feel free to use them, and you can always go to the cross repo uh, analysis, you have all the knowledge here, and we have open source pieces of, of, of the system. Uh, if you are a security consultant, I know you do security reviews and, and you do security reviews. Uh, so feel free to use uh, static analysis to kind of scale your work uh, and uh, scale and, and make you move faster. And if you are a static analysis researcher, our tools are open source. Play with them. Give us feedback. Uh, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, finally, I would like to thank everyone who has been part of this presentation and part of this uh, great work here. And I think this is a good time for questions now, if I have any time left. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll look at Hoover quickly, uh, if there are any questions, and I'll try to answer, to answer them. And at some point, I think I will go offline. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I don't think there's any questions so far. Uh, We'll give it one more minute, and after that, I will go find. All right. Uh, anyway, if you have any more questions, or if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me at Hoover or uh, my Twitter account. Uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, thank you very much, and have a lovely day. Bye.